Hi guys, what's going on? Rubarb Stu here with the third installment in the How to Play Critical Ops series, this time focusing on assault rifles. I've redesigned my testing methods so I can now present to you far more accurate and detailed stats, and what better video to bring these to than one of the most important weapons in the game, assault rifles. Rifles make up the bulk of the weapons used in the game, and with good reason. They're the jack of all trades of the weapons, offering better range, accuracy, damage, and armor penetration than SMGs, making them the ideal bypass for the average player. Rifles function great at both close and long ranges, and against armored and unarmored opponents, making them ideal for just about any situation. They span a very large price gap of $1,800 to $3,800, starting around SMGs and ending near snipers. For the majority of the time, Small characteristics of each rifle define the when and how to use them, but in some cases it does come down to personal opinion and preference, as price and performance gaps are so negligible at times. Stay tuned until the end of the video to hear my final verdict, but for now, let's start with the SA-58. The SA-58 is the cheapest of the assault rifles, coming in at just $1,800, and for that price, you're getting a pretty good deal. The gun offers pretty decent damage and okay armor penetration, but the one thing it really lacks is in the way it fires. When picking up the gun, you will immediately notice that it only fires in burst fire, which is sort of strange. Most first person shooters have the option to switch between automatic and burst fire, but having burst fire only on a weapon really does limit what it can and cannot do. Each four bullets fired in the burst deal 25 damage to the legs. However, because of multipliers, you can deal up to 41 damage to the stomach and 100 damage to the head. Now, four bullets to the head is 400 damage, and we can all see how this plays out. However, however, there is a catch. Against armor, similar to the SMGs, this gun really is quite lackluster. With only 60% armor penetration, you can't really do that much with this gun. If you miss the burst or only tag the person once or twice, you're pretty screwed, especially if they get in close. The gap between each burst really limits to how well you can spray down a close enemy and like all of the other assault rifles, meaning that this gun only really functions, say, spamming through a uh, long range or as like this kind of cheap sniper almost. However, for $1,800, it's a really good pickup against non-armored opponents, and I definitely recommend using it if you can get into the proper situation with it. Moving on to the next gun, we have the AK-47. Now, the AK-47 is personally my choice of rifle, and for a number of reasons. It's pretty cheap, coming in at only $2,400, and with that, you're getting a really solid deal. It's got pretty good damage statistics, I'd have to say. It's actually higher than the, both the M4 and the AUG in terms of base damage and in armor penetration. Well, I'll get to the armor penetration later. The gun deals 30 damage at base, but almost 50 damage to the stomach and to the head 120. So this gun is a little bit of a special case. And I can't figure out why. You see, with armor penetration, it's about 80%, dealing 31 to the arms, 41 to the stomach, 36 to the chest, but 120 to the head. The gun still retains 100% armor penetration when hitting someone in the head. However, at longer ranges, the damage fall off is more drastic when shooting someone with a helmet. So I'm not sure if this is a programming bug or something went wrong with how I was testing it, but the gun retains 100% armor penetration only to the head. The AK is also slightly less accurate. The spread grows slightly more than some of the other guns, and the recoil is probably one of the more drastic. However, if you can master these, which, I mean, you probably should be able to, or you're comfortable with just chap shooting, this gun is extremely effective and extremely cheap, which makes it my number one pick. The next gun is the M4, priced at $2,900. It deals slightly less base damage than the AK-47 and has slightly worse armor penetration. 29 and 70%. It's still a one-shot headshot to the head and it still performs pretty well. However, the reason why people, some people might pick the M4 over the AK-47 is accuracy. This gun has a much tighter fire. 
um, the uh, recoil is far less, and if you prefer that, then you buy this gun. However, it is $500 more, and you're really not getting that much out of it. Actually, in my opinion, it doesn't even make sense to buy the gun, especially with recent nerfs to its damage output. It just doesn't hold up to the raw damage of the AK-47. The next gun after this is the AUG, priced at $3,000. And the $100 price difference gets you just a little bit more. You actually have a lower base damage of only 26, but it still performs pretty well. 104 damage to the head, about 40 to the stomach. But where this gun exceeds is armor penetration. It has about a 90% armor penetration and deals just slightly under 197 damage to the head. Now, the difference between the AUG and the M4 is really quite small. The extra $100 gets you better armor penetration, but lower base damage. But overall, I'd pick the AUG over the M4. If you're going to bother to spend the extra money to get a more accurate gun than the AK-47, it makes more sense to pick up the AUG, since the M4 and the AUG are so similar, but the AUG is only 100 bucks more. The fifth rifle is the HK-417, and this one holds the big title. It deals the most damage per shot of any rifle in the game, coming in at 36. So the head at point blank deals 144 damage, 52 to the chest and 59 to the stomach, making it a two shot at most ranges. However, this is negated by its ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously low fire rate. This thing shoots like molasses. It has a 15 bullet magazine, which is half of the normal 30 that we see in rifles, but, but, the 15 bullets will be expended over even slightly more time than most rifles take to empty the entire 30 round clip. Yes, this thing is very slow. However, the slowness of the gun makes it very accurate, and you can shoot without having to compensate for recoil, and there's almost no spread accurately, making this gun sort of weird. I personally do not, cannot play with this gun, it just doesn't fit my kind of play style, and the fire rate's simply too slow, but there are a few people who do make it work, and... The last gun is the really overpriced one, and it's the one that a lot of people buy. Coming in at $3,800, we have the SG551. Now, this gun is going to actually blow your mind, because it's so overpriced. It has a base damage of 25, the same as the SA58. The statistics are identical, 25 to the legs, 31 to the arms, 41 to the stomach, 36 to the chest, and 100 to the head, but where this gun exceeds is armor penetration. This gun has a 100% armor pen ratio. 100% of the damage you deal is taken by the player. So what's there not to like? Well, it's overpriced as hell. You're paying $2,000 more for the same base damages just to obtain a 100% armor penetration. And let me tell you, you have to hit the head to kill them instantly. Past that, the gun deals similar damage to an AUG, really. Actually, it deals similar damage to an AK. And the AK is priced 1400 less, which is why this gun just doesn't make sense. The recoil pattern is really weird to control, it kind of goes side to side like an SMG, and the animations feel a bit clunky. However, you know, if you have the money, you can buy it, but for me, I'd still stick with an AK or an, even an SA. They're just better for the money. Now it's time for the final verdict. Where do these guns fit into the game? Which, one, which ones do you buy? Which one's the best? Where do you use them? Well, I'm going to tell you. The SA is pretty simple. Priced around the same area as an SMG, you'd use it at the same time as an SMG. I found that the two most effective ways to use this were A, just taking up a normal sniping position without a scope, or B, any long ranges which you can spam through. For example, uh, the truck in Barcelona, um, along mid in Amsterdam. These areas do very well since they're long ranges and no one can really engage you at close areas, making it ideal for the SA-58's burst fire. 
The AK-47 is extremely effective for the price and offers really no downside, except being not quite as accurate as other rifles at close ranges, long ranges rather, at close and shorter ranges, you know, maybe sort of a medium distance. Uh, tap shooting, burst fire, or full-on spray, this gun can get it done, and for only 2400 it's a great thing to buy. The M4 and the AUG are pretty similar, coming in around the same price, and, well, it comes into personal preference. Pick the one you like using more, but if I had to pick, I'd pick the AUG over the M4. Right now, the M4's nerfs just made it not good enough, and it really can't compete with the other rifles. The HK417 is sort of a weird pick. For $3,500, you're kind of overpaying. The fire rate doesn't make it great against enemies who are aiming right at you, but you can spam through smoke very accurately, very consistently. So if you're looking for a no recoil, no spread gun that you can just spam through a smoke, you can pick this one up. But for $3,500, it's a little bit more than you should really be paying for. The SG551 offers sort of okay statistics, but also the best armor penetration in the game. However, I still have to say, don't buy it. 3800 is just way too much. The 3800 you spend on an SG could buy you an AK-47, and armor, and a flashbang. Two flashbangs, actually. That's going to do you a lot more than buying this weapon, and that's why I just can't recommend it. The price to performance isn't as good as it should be, and it's just not a good investment to put your money to. So, that wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't like it, uh, leave, you can leave a dislike, but please tell me why you didn't like it in the comments below so I can improve these videos in the future. You can also subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this in the future and receive notifications of when they are uploaded. Thank you so much for watching. This is Rhubarb Stew. Keep on cooking.